Okay, now let's get started. Hello everyone again. My name is Ana Paula and on behalf of the Students Work Team, I welcome you to this live session about studying in Hong Kong. Today we have four amazing universities here along with us. We have the Chinese University of Hong Kong, we have the Education University of Hong Kong, the Hong Kong Polytechnic University and the University of Hong Kong. Uh, so that you can learn about all the opportunities and possibilities that Hong Kong offers for international students. Uh, during the presentation, you can send all your questions in the Q&A tab. Uh, we will track all the questions you, we receive here. Uh, and in the end of the presentation, we will have a Q&A session to reply to most of the questions you send us. So stay tuned and send all your questions there, okay? Uh, on the chat, you can send hi, hello, and general messages, but for questions, we advise you to use the Q&A tab, okay? So now let's get started with the presentation. Thank you, guys. Okay, so hi, everyone. So I'm Fred. So in the coming few minutes, so I will share some information of Hong Kong with you. And then after that, each of us will have an introduction of our university, followed up by our Q&A section. So Hong Kong is a vibrant um, international city and financial hub of Asia. It is at the doorstep of China where Western and um, Eastern culture mix together. So on this slide, you may see our famous tourism attraction in Hong Kong, Victoria Harbor. As you can see, Hong Kong is a modern city with many high rises. However, there are also a lot of mountains, green areas and country spot in Hong Kong. So um, you may go on hiking or camping during the holidays. So in Hong Kong, there are eight um, government funded universities. So all of them are very um, reputable, well, right? You can see the name of the eight university in different ranking like QS or Times, etc. So according to the QS World University ranking 2021, five of the university are ranked top 80 in the world. So Hong Kong um, is located at the heart of Asia and the southeast of mainland China. So within four hour flight, you can reach all the key Asian market by air transportation. So um, within five hours, you can reach uh, countries that contain half of the population. In Hong Kong, there are lots of direct flight connecting to um, other countries. For example, you can reach Amsterdam, Frankfurt or Sydney within 10 hours. So um, you may notice that Hong Kong is bilingual, which means that um, Chinese and English are both our official language. And English is the teaching medium in most of our university courses in Hong Kong. So if you are studying in Hong Kong, you won't find the language barrier, even though you didn't speak the uh, local dialogue or Cantonese or Mandarin, you won't have any problem in living here. Um, in Hong Kong, you can find uh, a very relaxing um, immigration arrangement for non-local students. So allowing them to stay in Hong Kong for 12 months without any condition after graduation. So during the extended stay in Hong Kong, so they may take up any um, employment here and further extend the stay if they can successfully get a working visa. So um, on this slide, you can have an idea of the course of study in Hong Kong. You may think the course um, of study in Hong Kong is huge, but the answer is no. Um, so from this slide, you can see Hong Kong is almost half of what you have to pay in other uh, some very famous study net destination, for example, USA, UK, Australia. So in Hong Kong, you can um, receive a high quality education with affordable tuition free. Um, so in Hong Kong, uh, all the uh, eight university offer a different kind of scholarship for outstanding students. So the scholarship are merit based. And in addition, our Hong Kong government has established various type of scholarship. So we will talk more um, on the scholarship in the university introductions. So, okay, so now let me introduce my um, representing university, the Education University of Hong Kong um, to you. Um, so uh, we have a history of more than 160 years of experience in providing the in-service teacher training. 
Um, so our increased teaching and research capability, in particular, um, teacher education are internationally recognized. So according to the QS World University ranking by subject, we rank first in Asia and then 16 in the world in education. So guided by the Education Plus vision, our academic scope is not limited to the traditional strength of um, teacher training, but has expanded to a wide range of complementary program offering in humanities, social science, as well as creative arts and culture. So our students benefit from a multidisciplinary learning environment composing um, second major, elective, general education, and non-formal learning, internship, overseas exchange, etc. And in Hong Kong, more than 80% of primary school and kindergarten teachers and 30% of secondary school teachers are our graduate. So here you may see a um, um, set of photos of our campus. On the top left corner, it is um, our um, swimming pool, which is part of our sport complex. And then uh, we also have the uh, fitness room and the uh, soccer beach. And then in the middle, you may see a bird eye view of our campus. And um, on the right top corner, so this is our student uh, hostel. So we offer more than 2,000 residential places for our students. And then at the bottom right corner, so um, you can see the discussion um, zone in our library. So on this slide, you may see a list of um, academic uh, departments under our free faculty. So uh, namely the Faculty of Education and Human Development, Faculties of Humanities, Faculty and faculties of liberal arts and social science. We also have a graduate school focusing on postgraduate studies. So um, our undergraduate program mainly consists of five-year educational program and four-year programs. So you may notice that there is a year difference between the two programs. So for a five-year um, educational program, students are eligible to register a qualified teachers in Hong Kong and be able to teach in kindergarten, primary school, or secondary school. So for our four-year non-educational program in arts and social science, there's no such privilege unless students take another year to get a um, postgraduate diploma in education. On this slide, um, you may take a look of our five-year um, programs on over this year. So students are required to choose uh, their programs at the time of the applications. Um, the choices are quite specific, ranging from business, language, mathematics to science. Um, there are three double degrees on over this year, and they offer the flexibility to the student who wish to develop their career in education by earning a BA degree. At the same time, if the student would like to acquire more knowledge on the um, field of interest, so um, they may prefer to do a double degree instead of a single degree. And then our five-year BA program provides training at both primary and secondary level, so our students can gain cross-sectional field experience, which allowing uh, them to have the flexibility to choose whether to teach in primary school or secondary school upper graduation. So for our four-year um, uh, program on over this year, um, we have Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of um, Social Science. Um, special education, psychology, global and environmental study are the um, popular choices among the students. Um, EDHK um, has an extensive network of um, more than 200 partner institutions in, um, from more than 30 countries or region. We encourage our students to um, study abroad for at least one semester by joining the um, credit bearing student exchange program. So a student will be a able to study in our um, uh, pilot institution, for example, in US, UK, Germany, or Australia for one semester. Apart from the um, student exchange program, there are other um, learning experiences outside Hong Kong, for example, short-term programs, summer programs, service learning, internship, and cultural and language immersion programs. So these programs provide an um, opportunity for our students to gain cross and cultural exposure and understanding throughout the study at the university. And then we also paid almost importance on the um, global learning experience to our student. So the financial assistance we provided to our student and uh, namely the global learning experience enhancement fund encourage at least one overseas experience for each student. And a certain amount of subsidy will be provided to our student. 
And here we will like, we would like to show you some statistics for your reference. So in our recent um, graduate survey, more than 95% of graduate were employed or pursue further study. And the monthly salary of um, our graduate from BA program is uh, around 3,900 US dollar, which is um, above the monthly salary within the territories. Okay, so um, let us talk about the admission requirement. So to be eligible, you need to fulfill one general academic requirement plus one English language requirement. So here is the um, and general academic requirement, and then we accept the international qualification, for example, uh, GCA level, IB, SAT, ACT, AP. So for the other qualification, you may scan the QR code and refer to our website to de for details. And then here is the list of um, our English language requirements. So you may know that you just need to submit one of these requirements for your application. So um, here you may get an idea of the estimated expenses per um, academic year. So for the tuition fee, it is around 18,000 US dollar. And then we provide the on-campus accommodation for our students. So uh, it costs um, around 1,700 US dollar. So the total expenses will be 26,000 US dollar. Mm, EDHK offer various, various type of scholarship for um, outstanding students. So they have been um, established to encourage the pursuit of academic excellence and to recognize student achievement. So scholarships are granted on the basis of um, academic merit and personal quality and the contribution to the community and other factors. So currently there are three type of scholarship under the entrance scholarship scheme. So um, applicants do not need to apply for the scholarships separately. So when they submit the application, we will consider it automatically. So for the application timeline, you may notice that uh, we have already opened um, our application for the coming September intake. And then the application deadline falls on the um, 31st of May. And then uh, in the September, the, the semester will start. So to submit an application, you may scan the QR code on the fly. So um, if you have any question, you can um, you are, you feel free to contact us through the channel listed. So now I will pass my time to Ying from the University of Hong Kong. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to the session again. Um, this is actually Yang from the admissions office at HAU, and I want to give you some information about our university. So to begin with, um, uh, I don't know what you guys think about university, but uh, in a lot of ways, university is a great place for students to learn about um, different things and also work with like-minded students to explore something of the interest. This is some of the projects that our students, team of students have done. For example, a robotic fish that they've created. That'd be the Guinness World Record, as well as the team of students who recently won the World Championship in the Microsoft Imagine Cup um, and getting an opportunity to be coached by the CEO of Microsoft, the first team in Hong Kong ever do that. So. As you can see, students um, um, going into um, studying in universities more than just going to classes, more than just um, graduating and getting a job, although that's also very important. But university is an experience that um, you know students should uh, really take full advantage of because it is a once in a lifetime situation where they get to be with students from different backgrounds and also do things of their interest. Um, another thing I would just want to mention here um uh the um university uh HAU is fair fairly um well uh, well known for its covid related research just wanted to uh, also let you know about that in terms of the academic rigor of the programs that we offer um students you may be uh you may want to know that um obviously as kind of my colleagues have already mentioned, all the courses are taught in English, first and foremost. That's very important that you should all know. The level of um, academic rigor that the courses 
offered by by the courses at different Hong Kong universities are on par definitely with a lot of the international universities in other countries as well. Um, students will have exposure to undergraduate research even at a quite, quite an early age. Um, it's not something that's reserved for just postgraduate students. If you are someone who's interested interested in doing research, you can start quite early. Um, and actually, you definitely offers that kind of platform to do that. And last but not least, of course, to bring that into real world and make sure to impact. Now, I want to talk a little bit about curriculum. At the University of Hong Kong, um, students have the option to do a fairly flexible curriculum, thanks to the 10 faculties um, that HAU has, ranging from humanities to science and engineering programs. So students under the faculty, uh, under the, uh, students studying in HAU would have the option to take courses uh, outside of just their uh, first major. For example, this student here is from Indonesia. She is um, doing her first major in the Bachelor of Science in a nutritional science, actually. So that's her major, and she's decided to uh, also explore her interests in another area. And so, so she actually ended up deciding to do a second major in the uh, business school to take finance as, as her second major. Um, with that kind of ability to mix and match courses, um, this student actually ended up uh, right now, she's working in business consulting in McKinsey and Company. So as you can see, um, even though um, uh, HAU does, uh, there is set curriculum, our students do have to follow uh, complete a certain number of courses in order to graduate. They do have a high degree of flexibility in terms of what they would want to do, and they can combine different areas of discipline to achieve what they want um, to, to explore passions. And obviously what I mentioned, the option is definitely just one of the few options a student can do at HAU. Um, now, not to mention that uh, other than just general degrees that uh, HAU offer, uh, students, where students can do majors and minors, um, there's also a, a very strong professional accreditation that HAU also offer. Uh, another great thing about studying in Hong Kong, studying at HAU, is that students will benefit from uh, a lot of the um, industry leaders who, who actually many of them either uh, were actually teaching at a university or they are mentoring students um, at, uh, at the university. So this is a student who actually started his own startup right now, actually. Uh, um, he, he started, uh, he, he kind of started his idea of uh, doing, of connecting, finding a need where, you know, there are food that is expiring and also places, for example, nonprofit organizations, food banks, that actually would need this kind of food and they have ways and channels to distribute them. So he has find that need and the linkage and that becomes actually his business right now, that's his startup. Mm -hmm. um, having that kind of access, not just to um, the industry, but also to you know the people in the industry, I think it's, it is something that is very um, useful, regardless of what uh, areas of what business you want to go get yourself into. And studying in Hong Kong, studying in HAU would definitely give students a uh, competitive edge in that regard. So now some statistics. In the past 14 years, HAU um, graduates from HAU has a virtually 100% employment rate. Uh, with the graduates being named the ninth most employable uh, graduates in the QS graduate employability ranking last year. So which means that, honestly speaking, a lot of students coming into HAU will have find no problem looking for jobs by the time they graduate in four years. Again, there's some uh, information on rankings that HAU currently holds. Uh, 22nd in the world in the latest QS World University ranking, third in Asia. And uh, as I mentioned, it is a very international, very diverse environment for students. Um, even though we are a public, univer a pu public uh, university, just as our colleagues have mentioned, um, um, uh, we have maintained uh, pretty much in terms of the citation, uh, we have uh, over 120 professors ranked among the top 1% top, top by, as I mentioned, citation in the publication, as well as close to two thirds of our staff who are international or outside of Hong Kong. 
know, that just again showcase that uh, the level of education that you will receive in Hong Kong is definitely on par with many international universities in traditional locations like the US or the UK. All right, maybe I'll skip through here. Um, I mentioned earlier that we have 10 faculties and, uh, in, and actually 42 undergraduate degrees as well. And because of the flexible curriculum structure, students can choose or can mix and match uh, study in over a hundred uh, major and minor areas. And obviously with the mix and match, then there are a lot of options, a lot of combination that students can do. Um, in addition, HAU also launched uh, in the past couple of years, launched what we call interdisciplinary programs uh, or Bachelor of Arts and Sciences program. These are programs where students have to study a set curriculum, but taking courses from different disciplines, different faculties. I'll just give you one very quick um, example would be students uh, studying, um, for example, financial technology, which is the fintech program that we, we are offering. Uh, we have offered it for, uh, I think this is the third or fourth year we're offering. And the idea of fintech program is that students are learning um, from uh, taking courses from the business school, from the uh, faculty of engineering, uh, obviously, because there will be programming knowledge involved. And, and as well as you know, learning something from the area of law that has to do with uh, law, law and regulations with financial products. So as you can see, this is already cover um, 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 courses that are uh, coming from three different um, universe, uh, three different faculties. So this is just one quick example of what these interdisciplinary programs are like because we have the goal to train leaders or future leaders who will have the ability to cross um, boundaries to be able to uh, excel not just in what they're good at but be able to know different things so that they can liaise with uh, people from different backgrounds uh, in whatever um, position that they hold in the future. All right, um, here, again, I think I'll just skip skip through this part. Uh, again, HAU also has a number of university collaborative programs or dual degree programs. These are programs where students typically will spend two years in HAU and then two years at a foreign uh, or a uh, partner institution in a, another country. By the time they graduate, um, they will be able to gain two or even more than two degrees. So if you want to know more, uh, uh, a lot of such information is available on the website and they are for specific discipline. And if you, um, and, and I would highly recommend you to visit those uh, because of time I won't go into details. Um, now let me spend just perhaps the next five minutes or so talk about the application procedures for students who are interested to actually submit an application. All the application is in fact uh, completed online. If you are a student studying in international or national curriculum, um, you will be able to apply using uh, whatever results, uh, whatever school transcripts and things that uh, to apply to us as long as they meet our admission standards. A full list of such um, courses or such uh, uh, exams will be available on our, on our website as I mentioned. Um, if you are still, if you're a final year high school student that you would still like to consider applying to HAU, um, uh, our first round evaluation, as you can see here, has already passed. This is usually um, how much, uh, when our application closes, usually that stu uh, students are expected to start the preparation a year. Uh, prior to when they actually uh, plan to enroll in a university. However, we also consider students' um, application on a rolling basis, which means that if you are still, uh, if you're in the final year of high school, for example, you still want to be considered. Uh, it's now still not, I wouldn't say it's too late for you to apply. Uh, HAU, like many other universities, do adopt a rolling admissions um, uh, a system where applications that are submitted after the main round deadline will still be considered but subject to program availability. Obviously the later you apply or the longer you wait the chances will be lower. So if you are interested I would highly recommend you to check out um, HAU's website, check out, check out any other Hong Kong University's website um, so that you can find out more about this, um, the application.
um, students also should be aware of the expected low, low boundary. So the score, the minimum, sometimes you we use the minimum score required um, and also that information is on our website. And as well as the program requirements. And in this case here, that uh, if a student is applying to, uh, just some examples, if a student is applying to engineering programs, they do have to know physics and math. Um, applying to business program, the English proficiency actually in, uh, and math as well will be considered. So that information again is on our website. Um, all students other than just the general admission standards and the, um, and the program requirements will also have to meet the English language proficiency plus a second language proficiency. So those two information is very important again. And um, uh, they can be met either with, say, for example, if you're in, in an international school, then IB English, or say, for example, O level English, those kind of results can meet the English requirements. A second language requirement is a, a second language other than English. It can be Chinese, it can be Arabic, it can be any language that you speak, as long as you can prove that. All applicants can apply with the predicted results. We do understand that our application deadline is fairly early. Um, and most, in most cases, um, students may not be able to have uh, all the results by the time they apply. So because of that, students applying with predicted results will be accepted. Um, we highly encourage students to provide their tra high school transcripts and their academic history uh, because we do ad adopt a holistic evaluation process. And um, throughout the application cycle, students can continue to upload or update new information, academic results, uh, extracurriculars, any information that they would like to add um, to increase the chance of being admitted. That information can be um, uploaded continuously throughout the application cycle. Students are also required to submit one personal statement and preferably preferably at least one reference letter, uh, can, that, which can go to up to two. Um, students can do that in, uh, directly through the online application portal to nominate uh, teachers to support the application. And last but not least, students will have five program choices and they can uh, potentially receive mul multiple offers, up to five offers, in fact, from HKU based on the application. And a last point that I did not put a slide here is that all students will be considered for the HKU entrance scholarship, which means that um, the, the, the entrance scholarship is a, sc a merit-based scholarship that all students will be considered for and uh, will be based on the application. So um, you do not have to submit a separate application. However, if you want to increase your chance to securing something, and you can also apply to a list of scholarships available on our website as well. So here is our website. HKU.chase slash international. Um, we have recently refunded the website. So if you have visited before, um, I would highly encourage you to go back to it. HKU.chase slash international for you to find out more about undergraduate admissions at HKU. So um, I think that's it. And I will pass my time to my colleague, uh, Allison. Hello, thank you, Ying. I'm Alison from the Chinese University of Hong Kong. So from my colleague, you probably have an understanding about Hong Kong already. And you may also have an uh, image of Hong Kong being a very, very busy city if you have visited us or seen pictures. But let me tell you, Hong Kong also have our natural scenery. So for example, um, the Chinese University of Hong Kong CUHK is only 20 minutes away from the CBD and you arrive at our scenic and natural campus as shown in this picture. Um, I'm going to talk about the unique college experience at CUHK um, this uh, today. So how unique can your college experience be? Um, let me share with you three student stories first. Um, through the extensive student support service that we provide through our colleges, program, faculty and career services, you will be able to secure your internship, exchange or even um, an employment contract before you graduate. 
So um, Kevin on the left, he has a truly international background. Uh, he actually studied in Singapore and UK for his high school and decided to join CUHK uh, Bachelor of Laws in Hong Kong. Uh, he's now in his final year. So in his past three summer, he actually spent his time working under three different types of legal firms um, in an in-house legal department for corporation, uh, international solicitor firm, and also followed a barrister. So through this different internship, he explored the different options or different aspects of practicing law. So when he graduated this summer, he already knows what path to choose in the legal industry. In the middle, you see Anna with an elephant. So guess where she took this picture? She actually took this picture on her exchange in Thailand. So you can see she studied hospitality and real estate management. Um, and she decided to go on an exchange to Thailand. Where else can you imagine going? Such a hosp hospitable country. In addition to Thailand, she also spent a semester in Australia. So if you plan your study well, you can actually go on more than one exchanges with us. Uh, we have over 280 exchange partners. Um, and if you don't want to go on any exchange like Kevin, you can just stay in Hong Kong or do internship as well. Finally, Anmol, he joined us uh, in our broad-based engineering program and decided to major in computer science, but he's also interested in the business. That's why after talking to our academic advisor, uh, he took up courses in the business school and finally he graduated with a major in computer science and minor in finance. He also did um, quite a few internships, both in engineering and also in the business world. Before he graduated um, last year, he already got an employment um, offer from an investment bank in Hong Kong and he's now currently working in Hong Kong. Next, let me give you some background of CUHK. We are founded in 1963 and we are a comprehensive research university, meaning that we offer undergraduate, master and PhD programs in our eight faculties. We're the largest campus in Hong Kong with 137.3 um, hectares of land. So how big is that? that is almost 200 football fields. And on this land, we have 168 buildings housing 17,000 undergraduate students. They study uh, in our 70 plus program under our eight faculties. Being the largest university in Hong Kong, we have the highest number of hostel places. So for, for all our international undergraduate students, we can guarantee three years out of four year of on-campus accommodation for students. We also have over 30 plus canteen on campus. So if you dine in a different restaurant every day, you do not have to repeat yourself for a whole month. We also have our own supermarket on campus. So if you are a master chef yourself, you can definitely uh, shop and cook in the um, uh, accommodation, the hostels. So out of the 17,000 undergraduate students, uh, we have 4,000 international students in the student body. They come from over 50 plus region. Uh, on the photo on the left uh, of ISA, that is our International Student Association. That's probably the first student association that you will be connected with because they organize the International Student Orientation Camp for you in August. And they also organize a lot of fun events for students throughout the year. If you're into more academic related activities, we also have a lot of clubs and society, including the CUHK TED Talk, debating club, different society competition that you can join. And if you want to share your own culture with us, you can definitely join our cultural event or host your own cultural event to share your culture with our local and international students. After all, coming to Hong Kong, you are looking for quality education. Um, in addition to classes, lecture and tutorial, you also have laboratory work, 
And if you like competition, you can definitely join different competition organized by the university or um, different companies. Exchange and internship are already covered earlier. Um, and there are also field trips, mentorship program, general education, physical education that will provide you a whole person education. Being one of the top 50 university um, in the world, we are strong in a wide range of subject areas to show a few here. If you're interested to find out more about our different programs offered at CUHK, feel free to screen capture now and you can visit our QR code uh, on the right to see the different programs offered at CUHK. And we are the only university in Hong Kong with a unique college system. It's like Oxbridge and also follow the Chinese Song Ming Dynasty era, the college system. Um, but to our students, they say it's like Harry Potter, the sorting hat. You actually get sorted into one of the nine colleges uh, when you join CUHK and all our students love their college. College is a place where you learn and grow with your peers and make lifelong friendship. The photo on the right show a high table dinner. Um, that's a community dinner that everybody dress up for this event. And in this particular event, um, there, uh, his guest speaker also visited this college and gave a talk um, to our student. Expenses. Um, for one year, you should prepare to uh, prepare for around just under 25,000 US dollar per year, including tuition fee, hostel fees, and living expenses. And for a four year program, you just times that by four. And again, um, CU should offer abundant scholarship opportunities for outstanding students. Um, you do not need to apply separately, um, just simply submit your application. If you want to find out more about um, CUHK, um, our application, um, requirements, um, upcoming events, or find more student sharing um, from our current student or lecture by our professor, go to our uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit our website. Our application is already open and also on a rolling basis. So if you have any question, feel free to ask them in the Q&A and we will answer them at the end. So now I'll pass over to Philip. Hello everyone. Um, so my name is Philip from the Hong Kong Polytechnic University. In short, we call ourselves PolyU, and uh, well, to show you the map of Hong Kong, uh, we mentioned about the eight government-funded universities. Um, so the pens are actually representing the uh, the university themselves. And for PolyU, we're re represented by the red logo um, you see in the sort of bottom uh, central corner. So swimming in of uh, for Poly U, we actually located right in the middle of the city. Uh, next to Tim Sa Cherry, we just consider the downtown of Hong Kong. And also the red little symbols are the metro stations, actually. And so we're surrounded by actually four metro stations. So it's really convenient to get around, um, you know, exploring Hong Kong, whatnot. Um, so something to consider. Um, you know, just then you meant uh, you you hear about um CHA. So for Poly U, um the um the campus environment would definitely be very different. And so um, if you're interested, definitely check out our website, check out our YouTube channel and whatnot. Uh, you'll see the, you know, the aerial view of the entire university itself. Um, so it's pretty interesting in that. All right, going to university, we are ranked 75th in the world as of now and for six um, for top 50 under 50. So as a university, we're actually quite young. We did not become a university until 1994, um, but we have been around for quite a while beforehand. And so we actually established really, really good connections with a lot of industries and whatnot. So that's actually played into our curriculum, um, which I'll mention later on. Um, so again, English, um, I guess we mentioned enough times already. We have six faculty in two schools. Um, so just then um, you hear a lot about, you know, different um, university that have different uh, majors, disciplines and whatnot. Um, something unique about PolyU is that we are really straight to the point. Um, we, we focus on more practicality and also apply base. And so usually a lot of those, a lot of these, um, you know, uh, majors actually, they would be gearing you up for the actual work field. And so it's really specific in that sense. Um, but 
you know, um, in the other hand, you know, kind of lose the flexibility in that. Because once you get into the uh, program itself, um, you are diving straight down um, to um, the really central master, um, you know, the courses, materials, and whatnot. And so because of that, um, it is rare to have double major in Poly U, so just mentioning that. Um, but of course, uh, we do offer really niche major as well, say School of Design, School of Hotel and Tourism Management, we really rank high in the, um, you know, um, in the QS ranking in that. And also, of course, engineering, given our name, Polytechnic, um, you can probably guess. Um, and on campus also, we have something called the Industrial Center, uh, which actually houses a lot of different uh, labs, um, which even other universities, um, students in Hong Kong would visit um, to use, um, you know, for their training and whatnot. All right, so something about uh, Poly U curriculum. So we have something called Work Integrated Education. And so what it is is actually uh, an internship actually built into the curriculum itself. And the good thing about this is that, you know, you actually do not need to look for your own, especially for international students. You might not have a lot of local resources. And the good thing about that, I mentioned about our relationship with the industries. And so we have a lot of um, major companies, major field players um, actually being our internship partners. And so they'll have set number of spot of uh, internship slot for, for our students, actually. Um, of course, um, say, you know, for accounting majors, the big four accounting firms would be our um, internship partners, um, but you can expect that it will be quite competitive. And so, of course, you do have to maintain a decent GPA and, of course, um, you know, soft skills and whatnot during interview would be important as well. Uh, we boast nearly 98% of our students would uh, engage in either employment or further studies after six months of their graduation. And so here, just showing the average salary of our graduates in 2019 would be around two, two, uh, 20,000 Hong Kong dollars. That's roughly translate to 2,600 US dollars. All right, other than the, the practicality I talked about, um, Polly also stress on service. And so what service learning is basically during one of your semester, you'll take a course um, in the service learning department. Um, you'll be geared up with that certain skill set. And afterwards, during that summer, uh, either semester break or summer break, you engage in that service project itself. So that might lead you to, um, sorry, that might lead you to some local projects, maybe serving the needy and whatnot, or actually going abroad as well, um, international opportunities, say um, going to Rwanda to install solar panels for the rural areas or the villages in that sense. And so the, um, there are definitely a lot of international opportunities. And aside, of course, global exchanges, we have more than 250 partners around the world, which you can choose from. Um, typically speaking, um, all of the students will be, get to enjoy at least one uh, one semester going abroad. Um, and the good thing about that is that you also don't need to pay extra you know, tuition fee, especially if you talk about the Western countries, um, most of them would you know, have a higher tuition fee. Um, but as exchange partners, you actually do not need to do that. You're paying the same rate as what you're paying in Poly U. All right, and aside, of course, um, during summer, did, um, you know, there will be other opportunities as well if you're insert, uh, interested in research pro uh, projects or, you know, going into PhD eventually, um, you know, we do have summer research abroad project as well. Um, but of course, these um, types of uh, engagement, you have to, you know, get to know your professors and whatnot. So may you be coming to Poly or not, um, that's always something to to know or to get prepared beforehand. You know, definitely spend more time, get to know our professors. Um, they'll actually, you know, be big help for you if you're looking for research or even eventually going into just work field. You know, having a reference letter from your professor will be a big help. And of course, student service, what do you get um, on campus? We have, you know, health clinics and whatnot, so I'm not gonna mention that, but more um, focusing on the residential halls. Um, we have two residential halls for international students. Um, you guys are guaranteed your first two years of housing. Um, you know, so typically speaking, you know, during a third year and fourth year, most of the students, they'll be, you know, for international students, they'll be getting, gathering maybe three or four of themselves and then renting a flat outside the city. So kind of prepare themselves, you know, for, what it looks like, you know, living in Hong Kong uh, eventually. And uh, for our housing, um, typically speaking, um, the uh, it will be a double room. Um, it will be single sex, of course, to, for the rooms and also for the floors. And so, yeah, there's no mixed gender in that sense. Um, so sharing a room, we are quite flexible in terms of who your roommate might be. Um, if you know someone who will be going poly you, you can put down the name and for him to put down your name. Um, or, or you can also, you know, look for someone who's from your home country, from international background, or even local students. So that's up to you to choose from. 
All right. Well, we mentioned about a lot of, um, about you know society and clubs. Of course, we do have like you know international student associations or you know South Asian associations or whatnot. Um, so also, of course, you know different types of uh, you know sport teams, band, you know um, societies, whatnot. So you can mention. Um, so you can also find out uh, all this on our website as well. So general requirements, uh, or what do you need to, you know, get into poly? You have to register. Um, firstly, of course, you do need um, whatever, you know, curriculum you're coming from. Um, there will be certain requirements from there. Um, there's also the English requirement we keep mentioning. Um, and on the side, um, there is some, you know, program requirement specifics. Um, say if you're applying for the design program, you do need to submit your portfolio, you know, your set of art, um, you know, artworks and whatnot. And also there will be an interview involved, um, assuming the first three mentioned would be satisfactory. Um, the faculty member will actually have an interview with you. And if all things goes, um, usually we'll give you a conditional offer if your grades are not finalized yet. Um, so we do accept predated grade as well. So going in, minimum requirements, what do you need? Um, we just listed out, you know, the more popular international curriculums. Um, but aside from these, if you're from national curriculums, you can also check out our website from there. Um, but for, for listed here, you know, that's a minimum requirement, but typically speaking for IB, minimum 30 would be required for A-level three Bs at least. And then for SAT, um, usually I'll say like about 12, um, or 1200-ish would be a safer range for an actual offer in that sense. And for English requirements, all listed here, um, you only need to satisfy one of them. Um, by you getting a higher grade, say in IELTS, you get overall band score of eight. No, great for you, but it's not gonna be super, super helpful in terms of this requirement. But of course, you will be able to showcase your English during the interview in that sense. So all listed here, you know, as long as you satisfy one of them, you're good. You do not need all of them, okay? Just one of them is good. All right, tuition fee, um, we are quite similar in terms of pricing. So this is per year. Um, so roughly you'll be spending around 27,000 Hong Kong, uh, 27,000 US dollars um, per year. Um, so this is a, a, a probably assuming for poly U will be your first two years. So during the third year and fourth year, the fee would go somewhat higher because you'll be living off campus in that sense. All right. We do offer merit-based scholarship just like everyone else. Um, so for our range, we have actually three tiers. So the first tier is 50% tuition fee waiver, second tier is 100% tuition fee waiver, and for the 135% tuition fee waiver, the top on top 35% will actually be given to you as living expenses. And so for this, um, it's merit-based, but they also consider, you know, holistically what you've done outside, um, you know, outside of school, whatnot, and then also concerning interview performance and whatnot. And uh, for all this, um, after you get an entry scholarship, um, there is also, uh, you know, you can say conditions where you have to renew it every year, which is by meeting the GPA of 3.2 out of 4. OK, so you do need to maintain your GPA after getting into university as well. All right. So deadlines, um, may you be graduating this year or maybe the next year. Um, this you can draw a reference on. Typically speaking, we'll have three rounds. The early round would be around the end of November and then main round would be either the end of February or the beginning of March. And then for our closing round for this year, at least it will be 30th of June, 2021. So as of now, we are on roller basis as well. And so if you get on our e-admission uh, e portal, you can apply it straight from there. Um, the scholarship, you do have to apply as well, but you do not need to visit other website. It's also built into the portal itself. So as long as you fill it in, you'll hit that part and then you fill it in and you'll be good, okay? All right, so staying in touch, um, if you're interested, definitely visit our website, polyu.edu.hk slash CEO. So that's a one, um, you know, if you go on that website, they'll lead you to other, other places where it's, um, you know, more informative in that sense. Um, so you do not need to other, other um, you know, webpage uh, during a, the beginning of your research. Um, I guess my time is about to be up, but um, yeah, definitely follow us on uh, IG, Facebook, or Twitter um, for the more, you know, updates concerning our international student experience and whatnot. And if you're interested, you can definitely email us for that international.study at poly.edu.hk as well. All right, it's a little rush, uh, but we are going into Q&A session as of now. So I'll pass the time back to Anna.
Hello, everyone. Thank you very, very much for this presentation. It was very useful for the students, I'm sure. And before starting our Q&A session, I just want to invite all of the students here to join us at the Students' Words Virtual Fair on April 7, next week. This will be the perfect opportunity for you guys to talk, uh, to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with the representatives, to ask all your questions, to find out more about specific programs you might be interested in. So it is an online and free event. All you have to do is to register here in the link I will place on the chat. So let me do it now. Okay, now it is on the top of the chat. All you have to do is to go to this link and to register, and then you'll be able to discover even more about the programs of your interest. Uh, and okay, now let's go with some of the questions we received. Uh, we received lots of questions about scholarships, fully fun funded scholarships. So could you talk a little bit more about this specific subject? Okay, shall I start? So basically, um, in um, Hong Kong, uh, we are eight government-funded university. Each of our university offers our university-based admission scholarship for outstanding students. As my colleague mentioned, they are mostly merit-based. So um, show us how good you are in your application. Tell us all your academic achievement, non-academic achievement, and you'll be considered for admission scholarship. And for students from the Middle East, um, the Hong Kong government also have a belt and road scholarship scheme. So if you are from a Belt and Road region, you may also be qualified for the Belt and Road Scholarship, which uh, is funded by the government, which covers the full tuition um, and also renewable for the full normative period of your study. So if your program is four year, it will, it will be renewable. So um, that's in general how the scholarship works. Um, anyone want to add more? Okay, and we also have a question about these scholarships, but related to postgraduate and master programs. So is it the same situation? Does something change? Mm, maybe I can take this question. So uh, actually, um, um, I think four of us, um, the university also offer postgraduate uh, programs. But uh, unfortunately, we are the colleagues uh, responsible for the um, undergraduate programs. So for the postgraduate program, I think um, it is better for you to check it um, on our website so you can find, um, uh, for example, the programs on offer, entrance requirement, and scholarship opportunity from our website. Also, I have posted um, some links on the Q&A published section, um, which also includes the CUHK graduate school and scholarship admission scheme. So for those who are looking for postgraduate study, you may also go and check out the links that I posted on the published site. Um, it's very similar. So depending on what type of um, postgraduate program you're looking for, whether it's a research master, research, PhD, then there are different studentships, um, tuition, scholarship available. Perfect. So guys, just so you know, it is on the Q&A in the published part. So you can find all the links there. And another question here, are there uh, programs taught 100% online for now? because I, I guess this person is worried about the pandemic situation, so she wants to understand more about her possibilities just for now. Maybe I'll, I'll take this one. I think um, similar to a lot of other Hong Kong universities, I think um, the decision is based on the current situation and the guideline by the Hong Kong government, especially, you know, the the um those who are uh, overseeing obviously the uh, disease control situation and, uh, and 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 things but i would say that in the case of hong kong which i believe is also the case with many other universities that um for students who are 
um, un, uh, who have concern over health or over, you know, like 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 contracting uh, COVID nineteen on their way here, uh, they will have the option to study at their home country doing online courses. But um, students who want to uh, come to Hong Kong with a student visa, I believe, unless there is a specific travel restriction, they will be able to enter Hong Kong. So international students, so for, for example, we talk about last year, obviously we don't know what's going to happen in September, but we, when we're talking about last year, um, students who want to come into Hong Kong, as long as they can get a flight, as long as they get the place for them to do the quarantine, they can enter Hong Kong with their student visa. And once they've completed the quarantine, they can go into classes. So it, uh, depending on the exact situation uh, in that month or perhaps in that semester, they can actually take part in physical learning. But I, my understanding is that a lot of the, um, you know, the 100 people lecture, I think a lot of those have been moved online because simply it's not feasible to do um, social distancing. Uh, there's not actually not, not going to be enough classroom for, for, for that kind of activities. But I think for smaller scale activities, for like tutorials, like studios and things like that, they require a lot of hands-on you know, uh, activities or hands-on uh, actually experiment or anything that involve more of like a face-to-face -face, um, learning component, those are actually possible in smaller groups. I don't know if anyone else want to add to that. Okay, thank you. And uh, here we have another question about health insurance. So is it necessary, mandatory? What are the requirements related to health insurance? Maybe I'll take that one. Now, um, it's actually an excellent, excellent question. Uh, a lot of students ask that because, um, you know, like, like you, if you, for example, if you go to the US, you have to pay for pretty expensive health insurance plan, as all of you know. Um, in the situation of Hong Kong, it's slightly different. As long as students do have the Hong Kong ID card, which they can apply basically, if they're a student, they can apply for HK ID card. If they do have an HK ID card, then they will be able to use a public health care system just as the Hong Kong residents do. So they don't technically need a insurance plan, although they can obviously opt for more coverage. For example, if they want to go into private hospitals or they want to, you know, more comp like like more you know, you know, want to be covered more than it's possible um, for them to acquire additional health insurance plan. But I personally think that that is not necessary for a lot of our students as long as they are able to get a Hong Kong ID. Um, so um, I think my understanding is that a lot of students will probably have their uh, health insurance coverage just for the first couple of months. And once they get the HAID, then they can use a public health care system, which is very affordable. And, um, and and it's quite good, actually, I would say, other than just uh, the longer waiting time, I would say it's, it's pretty good. So yeah. So maybe I'll add a little bit on that. Um, also on campus, we'll have clinics. And so if it's just minor, like say sickness or whatnot, illness, um, then usually the on-campus clinic would be able to help the students with that. And for, I'm not sure about the fees exactly for all the universities, but for us, it's only cost them two US dollars per visit with consultation and the medicine. And whatnot. So it's quite affordable. In that sense. Okay, nice. Thank you. And we have some questions about PhD and master programs as well. So just to keep it more broad, broad and general, uh, are there any specific requirements to study for a master's in Hong Kong or even a PhD program degree in Hong Kong? So let me try and answer that um, uh, again. We, as four, are from the undergraduate admissions uh, unit. So um, for the detailed information, do visit our website for more details. But in general, you need to fulfill the English requirement, that's for sure. And if you're looking for a research master PhD uh, program, you definitely have, need a related um, degree in a good university, good GPA. And also if you're doing research, uh, of course, 
you have to have your topic ready. Um, if you're looking, I saw someone looking for MBAs, then for business uh, master, then um, that's more um, um, uh, they don't you don't have to have a business degree, but maybe what experience will help. Um, so all that information are on our website and again scholarship are also available for um, students looking for postgraduate study um, so feel free to visit our website to find out more perfect thank you and again we also received many questions about specific programs so medicine engineering and those other other specific areas and for these people i would say that the best thing you can do is to join our virtual fair on april 7 next week because there you will be able to talk one-on-one -on -one with the representatives and explain all of your questions and your specific situation and then you will get more information about your needs okay uh, we also received some questions about uh, if it's possible to see this session later, maybe tomorrow, and you know, after the session ends. And this session will be available on our YouTube page. So you just have to look for the student word on YouTube, and then you will be able to see it as many times as you want. Uh, last but not least, we received some questions about the requirements for scholarships as well. So uh, just to wrap it up, could you talk a little bit about this matter as well? So I guess in general, like first first thing the students must have would probably be, you know, a, a required scores in the sense that, you know, every university would be quite different from one another, I'll say. Um, but that's the, I would say the first bar that they have to meet. But afterwards, you know, because it's actually quite competitive in terms of like scholarship wise as well. And so, you know, there will be the holistic approach on that um, concerning extracurricular um, activities um, or, you know, additional stuff that they've done outside of classrooms and whatnot. And then also, um, of course, the interview that I mentioned uh, for poly, at least um, for other universities, probably they'll have something assessing the students um, concerning personality or now best fit for the university, something like that. So would other colleagues have something to add on that? Okay, so we have now reached the end of this presentation. I want to thank you all again for joining us today. Thank you to the presenters here, the institutions. Thank you all for the students as well. And I hope to see you soon. Hope to see you on the Students' Words Virtual Fair. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Take care and stay safe, guys.